All right, Shalom, Akim Shalom. Hey, y'all, Bashima Oshai, Brock Thumb. To all you brothers out there, you little man and sisters, worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Before we start, though, let's give all praises to the Creator of the heavens and the earth, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Harakak Wadash. Yahweh, you know what the hell just happened? Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai, that's the name of the beloved Son. Of course, you need to call on those names in these last days. And um, the Harakak Wadash, that's the Holy Spirit. Okay, Dubon said, Apostles over there, great millstone and peace and mercy once again to you, brothers and sisters. All right, man, uh, the Spirit moved me to go into this subject right here, and I entitled it um, Economic Hitmen. They covet fields and take them by violence. And in this lesson right here, I'm going to go into how I'm going to show you how um, the self proclaimed white men, all right, the elites of the society, the banking families. Um, how they by violence, by economic hitmen, by a, 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 a violent system, have they been able to gather up all of the world's resources, which is according to prophecy. And it shows the true character of the self-proclaimed white man for who he really is. And you notice we call him the devil, according to the Bible, because he is the devil, the deceiver. And as Yahweh Shai said in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill. Now, um, when I first heard about economic hitmen, I had I had heard the brother, the elder brother Barack in the camp talking about it. And I heard that brother talk about that some years back. And I didn't quite understand it. I heard how the brother broke it down. I understood it was like Esau stealing. You know, basically stealing on a worldwide scale. But now the spirit moved me like two days ago. I ran across a guy, his name is John Perkins, I believe. And he wrote this book, as you see right here on the title, I mean on the screen, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And when when I start looking into it, like how I ran across his video on TikTok, and I start looking into it, and I, I end up I end up like I end up um like giving three hours of just looking into it and tripping off how Yahweh Shemel Oshai has used this self-proclaimed white man in a very deceptive way to steal the resources of the world and not just to steal them, but to keep people in poverty so that he could stay rich. You see? So we're going to get into it and I'm going to go into this interview with John Perkins. Now, before we go there, let's look up the word economic hitman so you can know what it means. All right, and this is right in the Urban Dictionary. It says, um, economic hitman. It says, are highly paid professionals who cheat countries around the globe out of trillions of dollars. They funnel money from the World Bank, the U.S. Agency for International Development, and foreign aid organizations into the coffers of huge corporations in the pockets of a few wealthy families who controls the planet's natural resources. Their tools include fraudulent financial reports, rigged elections, payoffs, extortion, sex, and murder. Oh, that sounds just like John 10 and 10 to me. The thief coming my not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. So... In an economic hitman, according to the definition, are professional trained men. You know, men or a woman, whatever they decide they want to do. And they cheat. They cheat countries out of trillions of dollars. And they offer you these loans. You can't pay them back. And then they come for your resources after that. So then you become indebted to them. Financially, and then they have control over your resources. And when they do so, they corrupt your government. They push the Babylonian juice or the ways of America. They do all of it. And then, like I said, all the power go into the, it goes into few hands, few wealthy families who control the planet's res natural resources. That's how this is a, the elite, Banking families, 
they use economic hitman to get them in their statuses, their high statuses they're at today. They did this because they're in control of the the natural resources of the world, majority of them. And we know that this is all according to prophecy. Okay? Now, the book that the guy wrote was is called John Perkins' Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And this is basically just like the um, the cover of the book, you know? But instantly, I thought about Micah 2 and 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence. That's where part of the title come from in the lesson. This Edomite covets your land. He covets your natural resources. And he has a whole plan or a strategic move to, to bring you down and suck you dry. And make you feel like, make you feel like you are the problem. This devil is this devil is literally the devil, which means deceiver. This Edomites, the self-proclaimed white men and elites of their society. They're truly devils, man. It says, and they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. And they did all so by the Federal Reserve note. Loans. Taking people's houses away, their lands, their natural resources away. The several claim white men and elites of their society, they're not coming to do nothing to you but to destroy you. Destroy your land, destroy, you more, more, uh, destroy your heritage. Just overall, total is your whole heritage is finished about time the several claim white men get done with you. All right? So we here at this, I found this on... The page called Talking Stick TV, and it says John Perkins' Confession of a Hitman Part One. I end up watching the whole 53 minutes, but I got just two parts in it. We're gonna we're gonna touch on in this um in this little uh interview that he had with this with with um Talking Stick TV. So let me cut it up a little bit here. We're gonna go we're gonna go straight into it. You know. You know what? I will read this right from the board real quick. By um, by uh, Shiloh 144 Shalom, uh, the brother put Proverbs 4 and 16 for they sleep not except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they have caused some to fall. So, these Edomites, their, their pride and joy is based off of bringing you low and sucking you dry, you know, so that they could be high and you could be low. That's like they bust a nut off of that. Okay, so let's go right here. Uh, let me fix the volumes real fast, and then um, let's let's listen to some of this interview. You're gonna see John Perkins. So when you went into the Peace Corps, was that by was that your own idea, or were you nudged in that direction? Well, I'd been recruited by the National Security Agency, and while I was still in business school, I happened to go to a, a Peace Corps recruiter speech, and was was quite taken by by the recruiter and I as I mentioned grew up in rural New Hampshire I, I come from a long line of Yankees who who killed the uh, Indians and made love with Indians and created children with them um, and I'd always been fascinated by the Abnaki tribe which I you know have a little little bit of blood from and always I'm sorry I'm gonna be stopping it brothers forgive me on the stopping I know a lot of brothers don't like that but I just want to point out that the guy said that he come from a family of Yankees and he's always been into how Esau Edom took down the Northern Kingdom tribes. He, he, he it like it always fascinated him that he that they were able to take down the Northern Kingdom. All right. You indigenous of North, Central and South America. So this is an economic hitman right now. I mean, this is an economic hitman, John Perkins. So you can see. If he's into liking how the Edomites took down the Northern Kingdom, you can see why he fits the spirit of an economic hitman. You know, he fits it. He's a he's an Edomite. He's a devil. He has that hatred. He has that hatred that's within his spirit. Okay, I just want to just point that out. Let's continue on. Fascinated by by Indian 
who killed uh, Indians and made love with Indians and created children with them. Um, and I'd always been fascinated by the Abnaki tribe, which I you know have a little little bit of blood from, and always fascinated by by Indian lore. And so as I heard this Peace Corps recruiter speak afterwards, I went up to him and I said, you know, is there any possibility if I join the Peace Corps, going to a place like the Amazon and living with people who live as our indigenous people did here? Two, three hundred years ago, and he said, "Absolutely, nobody wants to go to the Amazon. If you if you volunteer for that, I I, I think you'll be sent there." And and then I called this man who had recruited me at the National Security Agency, and I told him about this, and told him I was torn because I wanted to go to the NSA, but I also was intrigued by this. He said, "Go. We'll make sure that you get." To, uh, into the Amazon. He said, that's where all the action is. These are the people who are opposing our oil companies. We need the Amazon for oil. This would be a great experience for you. When you come out, you can work for us. So, um, you heard the man confessed himself that when he was in school, this guy, you see how old he was, he was doing a lot of his dirt in the 70s and the 80s. You know, 70s, 80s, and the 90s. Okay? This man should be in jail. Why ain't John Perkins in jail? Because the Edomites was backing this man up. All right. Now, the self-proclaimed white people and elites, they, they funded this man. Now, um, as you heard, they when he offered to go, when they was taking down Central America, when they were taking down Central America during the time of the Pananel, uh, uh, damn, I always, I can never say that right. Um, uh, Panama Canal, you know, the deception of that. When Esau went in there and took that that uh, that port and all of that stuff, but basically he said it was about oil companies. It was about getting oil companies. Now, when I heard him saying uh, they were doing this to, to to gather up the oil, it goes back to prophecy why this Edomite is so into wanting to get the fatness of the earth. That's what the oil was called. Okay, now let's go right here to Genesis. 27 and 38 it says and Esau 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 Edom also known as Edom are the self proclaimed white people today and their descendants it says and Esau said unto his father has thou but one blessing my father bless me even me also my father and Esau lifted up his voice and wept and Isaac his father answered and said unto him behold thy dwelling should be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. Now, when you look up the fatness of the earth, which um, uh, the brother, the elder brother Brock, you know, the brother, you know, he went over this before. So a lot of things I'm adding. It's uh, when you when you look up the the Hebrew or uh, the Hebrew word for fatness, it goes back to the Strong's eight forty nine twenty four. The Hebrew word is mashaman, mashaman. All right, and it says. One of the definitions under 1B, oil. Okay? Oil. And that's what this Edomite is. That's what his spirit from the Heavenly Father, it programmed him to want to go after the oil. Because he would make big money, big business. He would bring down countries. And, you know, that's how the Federal Reserve became the number one country. I mean, the number one currency in the world. It was through oil. You see, so it was prophesied that he would he would be after the oil, okay? So, and also the fatness of the earth, like it says under 2B, it says fertile spots. Basically, Esau lives in the best parts of the earth. He has control over the best parts of the earth, and that was the blessing given to him um, through his father Isaac. So when you hear economic hitman talking about they're building up, they were doing these jobs and they were building up, they was getting companies, they were funding companies to build up these oil, these oil reserves. It goes back to the prophecies. That's why he's so into it. So Isaac told him, thy dwelling should be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword should thou live and should serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou have the dominion that thou should break his yoke from off thy neck. So, like I said, he was going to live by the sword. As you're going to hear this guy go on to further explain, um, they use the sword to get that to, to break down these these companies. 
you know? And even, even economic hitmen, they don't necessarily, well, well let me restate that. The, I want to say the sword also for Esau is his paperwork or how he can lend you loans. That's a part of his sword because it, even though it's not something physical that could hurt you, but it's something, it's something that, that his contracts, his lending and all of that, that could hurt you and get him control over you by signing and agreeing with this man. That's a part of his sword as well. Let's go right here to the eight minute mark. Let's go right here to the eight minute mark. So why this guy is so into getting oil? Because of the prophecy that was given to his forefather, Isaac. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a Satan. Esau. Now let's start right here at the eight minute mark. A real strong sense that that's what was going on. Okay, so you then came back and you joined this company, Chaz T. Maine. Correct. And we called it Charles. It was spelled C-H-A-S. But Ch Chaz T. Maine, we usually called it Maine just for short. Right. Big, uh, we had about 2,000 employees in Boston. It was what's called a closely held corporation, which means basically a partnership. About 5% of the, these 2,000 employees owned the company. They were what we call partners. And I became one of those eventually. I became chief economist of that firm, and I ended up having roughly 50 people working for me over, over, over time. And what type of work does that company do? Well, interesting. The company called itself an engineering construction firm. And we never did any real construction. We never owned uh, any equipment. Uh, and in fact, we prided ourselves on saying we're objective. We don't need to go into countries and tell them to build big systems because we don't gain anything from it. We're not like Bechtel or Halliburton, Stone and Webster, any of the big construction companies. We don't do that. But the fact of the matter is our job was to convince other countries to take very large loans and then to convince the World Bank and other such organizations to give these countries huge loans, let's say a billion dollars, to Ecuador to build big infrastructure projects, uh, power plants and transmission lines and distribution systems, ports, highways, industrial parks, uh, things that, uh, that didn't benefit anybody except the very wealthy people in those countries who were quite corrupt, and we corrupted them. So our job was to convince, let's say, Ecuador to accept a billion dollar loan, convince the World Bank to give Ecuador a billion dollar loan. Ninety percent of that billion dollars would come back to the United States to pay for Halliburton, Bechtel, these kinds of, or, or, the, or these types of companies uh, to build uh, the, the infrastructure, and then and which would only serve the wealthiest people in those countries. And then the country would be stuck with this huge debt, which over time would continue to be refinanced and get larger and larger and larger. So that in fact today, Ecuador owes more than 50% of its national budget just to pay down its debt service, which means there's very little money left to go to pay for the education or health services for the poor people, who are the ones who suffered from these projects. It was their rivers that were destroyed as we built hydroelectric plants. It was their land that was destroyed, and while well, a few of their people got wealthy, as a few of ours did. Uh, and so now they're saddled with this incredible debt that they can't possibly pay. And Man, he said a lot. He basically explained that his job was to go into these countries, these poor third world countries, and get them, uh, they may say, for instance, like Brazil, they sit on a lot of oil, you know? or whatever country has, whatever resource on that land. The economic hitman, him, his job was to go in that land and get you to accept a billion dollar, a billion dollar loan. And after he, after they get that poor country, of course, if somebody see a billion dollars in their face and they're not doing too good, they're going, you know, that money going to sway them to just not really think they're going to take the billion dollars. But he said, look, it was it was always been terms and conditions with this damn devil. They were offering them the billion dollars, but they were they had to hire con, con, uh, companies like I looked up Halliburton. These are construction companies, but behind the scene they're doing dirty work. These uh, companies like Hallib Halliburton, they were hired to go in there, 
in these third world countries and build infrastructures like parks, like he said, um, uh, like, uh, you know, just say for instance, like a, 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 a aqueduct or, you know, a, those different type of things that will build up. It will never, like he said, it will never be used for the education and nothing like that. It will only be used for things like that, things that construction could, could build. So even the million, the billion dollars that they were given, he said at least 90% of that was going back to America because these country, these companies like Halliburton, that, that's a company of America, they were given the money to build up these countries. So the money didn't never even hit these poor countries. It rotated right back to America. So like he's going to further explain, the countries stay poor. The money never go to building it up, the morality. It never go to making it better. But what happens is that the country end up in a lot of debt. And when they end up in debt like that, the plan was always to tell them, well, you got to give us the natural resource. And on top of that, our infrastructures are built on your land now. Now check out Halliburton Company. It says, Halliburton Company is an American multinational corporation responsible for most of the world's hydraulic fracturing operations. In 2009, it was the world's second largest oil field service company. You see? So all these come at the end of the day, everybody, it's like, it's like, the elites of this society, the bankers, they're the they're they're the they're the spider on the web, and their web is these companies. And if you touch any part of the web, you get caught with these companies, or you get caught up in the spider that's controlling this whole little web and this whole little system, he's sucking you dry. This is uh Proverbs 28 and 8. It says, He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance so esau by usury and unjust gains he is he has increased himself this is how the heavenly father programmed this devil to where he will have the the grips of the world in his hand because job 9 and 24 had to take place this is a part of it using economic hitmen Having a whole plan before even getting your country, before even step a foot in your country, he has a whole plan on how to he's gonna dismantle you and leave you off um more poor than you started, or more oppressed than you started, or more in debt than you started. It says he that by usury and unjust gains increases substance. He shall gather for him that shall pity the poor. So at the end of the day, the righteous will prevail. Okay, so let's look up the word usury real quick. I'm going to look it up real fast because what Esau did to get in power was use usury on everybody. It goes back to the Strong's H5392 and the Hebrew word is nashak, nashak, and it says interest. See, when he hit you with them loans, when he was hitting these country with these billion dollar loans, he was at the high interest rates. And he knew that these countries like Ecuador, which is, what is Ecuador? That's, that's the tribe of Zebulon. That's Central America. He knew that the Central America, all over there in, in uh, South America, this guy even explains, John Perkins, he even explains that he did a job in Indonesia. You know? So this devil has been by using his paperwork, he's gotten, he's made, he's raped and robbed the earth. He's raped and robbed it. You see? So let's continue on a little further. I got a little more. And so we go in and demand our pound of flesh, very much like the mafia, that's what we call it. Who are the ones who suffered from these projects? It was their rivers that were over time would continue to be refinanced and get larger and larger and larger. So that in fact today, Ecuador owes more than 50% of its national budget just to pay down its debt service, which means there's very little money left to go to pay for the education or health services for the poor people who are the ones who suffered from these projects. It was their rivers that were destroyed as we built hydroelectric plants. 
it was their land that was destroyed, and there, while a few of their people got wealthy, as a few of ours did. Uh, and so now they're saddled with this incredible debt that they can't possibly pay. And so we... So, you know, real quick, and I'm going to let them play. I got a quick point. When these companies like Halliburton went in, and there's more companies, that just one, they hide under construction. They would destroy the naturalness of the land by putting power plants or whatever there, destroying the naturalness of a river that was right there. And the people, the poor people of the land suffered from it, like he just says. While the sellout government, the Ecuador government, guys like that, they got rich. And then Esau, Edom got rich. Now, if whenever economic hitman went in there, said, for instance, there was a real leader that said, for instance, Ecuador, as he's speaking, said, for instance, Ecuador had a real man in there, their government, and he really cared for the people. This guy even explained how he had to, he had certain dudes took out because he couldn't, the, his job failed. So they sent in the jackals, which are the assassins. But if those government had real men in there, this guy, if he couldn't persuade them, they'd send in the jackals and that dude would be assassinated. And then they would put a puppet leader in Ecuador, since we're talking about Ecuador. And then all paperwork is signed and everything is done. That sellout, whoever that is, he get rich. His family is living up, but his people are poor. And Esau Edom get rich. You see how Esau plays the game? You see how his game? And now the Heavenly Father is revealing this damn devil. He's revealing this dude for who he, that he's the devil. This dude is the devil. Let's continue a little further. Got a little bit more. You know? Oh, you know what? Let me grab one for Shiloh real quick. I grabbed one from this brother. Brother slapping him up there. Um, this is us. Uh, um, let me see. Uh. Yeah, I like the one you put was for Sirach 12 and 16. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagined how to throw thee into a pit. He will wipe, he will weep with his tears, but when he but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. That's the spirit of the Edomites and the elites of their society. The self-proclaimed white people. Let's play a little bit more here. We go in and demand our pound of flesh. Very much like the mafia. That's what this incredible debt that they can't possibly pay. And so we go in and demand our pound of flesh, very much like the mafia. That's why we called ourselves hitmen. And so today, for example, this is actually what's happened in Ecuador. And, and today, um, we need Ecuador's oil. We need the oil from this Amazon area where these indigenous people live that I work with as a Peace Corps volunteer. And we tell Ecuador, since you can't pay off your loans, what you need to do is turn over your Amazon to our oil companies. And that's what they're doing. And the indigenous people there, the ones I worked with now, have basically declared war. They said, we're not allowing these oil companies to come in. We're going to fight to the very last man if we have to. It's a terrible situation. And what it is all about is building empire. We've done this in every country around the world that has resources that we covet. Often this is oil in places like Indonesia, Nigeria. Uh, Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia, so many different places, but sometimes it's other resources. For example, in Panama, it was the Panama Canal. And in this process, we've managed to create the largest empire in the history of the world, and we've done it largely without military might. It's been done primarily through economic hitmen like me. Now, when the economic hitmen fail... Man, yo. <laughs> Wow, man, why ain't this dude, he should be, his dude should be in the spiritual world already. He said, economic hitman like me, you should be, you should be taken down. You, you've destroyed a lot of people, but did you hear what this guy just explained here? You know, did you just hear what this guy explained? So like, he, like it, it boils down to, they get these loans, they get not able to pay them off, and then they come up for your natural resources. Now, the spirit quickly made me think of the quote spoken by Meyer Amschel Rothschild. He says, let me issue a control. I'm sorry. Let me issue and control a nation's money. I care not who writes the laws. You see? So lending to these companies, these devils, 
knew that these these third world countries or wherever whoever they attacked, they wasn't gonna be able to pay off the usury, the interest, and then they will then have control of your resources. So this these devils, these devils are something else. And as you heard, John Perkins just speak. He said, "Look." We've created the largest empire the world has ever seen. I don't know why my computer do that. It's a little pretty whack. But it says, he said, we created the world's largest empire you have ever seen. And we did it without a military. Wow. Wow. Without a military. Because they had this deception going economic hitman now listen on further what he's finna say i'm gonna go back just a little bit listen on further what he's finna say the resources for example in panama it was the panama canal and in this process we've managed to create the largest empire in the history of the world and we've done it largely without military might it's been done primarily through economic hitmen like me now when the economic hitmen fail as we've done some, as we did in Panama with Omar Torrijos and in Ecuador many years ago with Jaime Roldos when I was there. When we fail, the jackals are sent in. And these are CIA sanctioned troublemakers. They, they will try to foment coups in a country. They'll try to overthrow the president. If they fail, if they're not able to do that, then they'll assassinate him. And Jaime Roldos of, of Panama, who was not overthrown, so he was assassinated. And uh, and uh, Omar Torrijos, of, uh, Jaime Rolos of Ecuador, Omar Torrijos of Panama, uh, the same thing happened. We economic hitmen failed, the jackals went in and assassinated these presidents. It happened with Allende in Chile, Arbenz in, in, in Guatemala, uh, it's part of what Vietnam was about, and, and when the jackals fail, and the economic hitmen both fail, as in Iraq, the, the final step is for us to send in our young men and women to die and to kill and that's what we're doing in Iraq today and we'll leave it off with this man's interview there but did you hear the system how it sets up you have the economic hitman they go in they try to offer you these loans you know now if you if you decide not to take the loans they're going to send in the jackals basically the jackals are the assassins all right they, they, the jackal, however he moves, he could form a coup or he could just straight up assassinate you like the dude said. Now, if the jackal fell, the third step is to send in the military. Like he said, send in our men and our, and our women and take it by force. Like we read in Micah, back in Micah 2 and 2, they cover fields. They take them by violence in houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man... And his heritage. That's exactly what John Perkins explained his job was to do. You see? So this damn Edomite, this dude, the, the self-proclaimed white man, the, the Edomites according to the scriptures, they are that evil, that devil according to the Bible. They are the bad guys of the earth, period. Like if it's a movie, you have a bad guy, Esau Edom is that dude in the Heavenly Father's movie. It's Isaiah 14 and 4. It says that thou shouldest take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Now, you see Esau losing his power right now because it's prophesied he's going down. It ain't, it ain't prophesied for him to rule forever, but he has to go down. We see him going down. And a part of him going down is, is guys like John Perkins. Guys like this. Snitching on what he's been doing. You know? So he's losing. This Edomite's losing. Everything you've doing, everything you have done to get where you are at now is coming out. And it's just a bunch of blood on your resume. Verse 6 in Isaiah 14, it says, Who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hindereth. So this Edomite, with a stroke, have he been with a, a heavy stroke, 
a heavy violence have he continually ruled over the nations in anger. You know? So he raped and robbed Central, South, you know, and, and he raped and robbed Central and Mexico, Central and South America. He raped and robbed it. And in all the other places around the world, he raped and robbed it. And he got it got he got the people in debt and he took their natural resources. Okay? This is uh Sirach chapter 10, verse 8. It says, Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is transferred from one people to another. Why is earth yeah, and that's how he did it? Through unjust dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit. He did it, he got it, he got the world in his hand like from doing that. Which it was prophesied that he would do it like that. As we read in Genesis, he lived by a sword. But since he did it in such a wicked manner, he has to you reap what you sow, you have to pay. So since he got the world by violence, he going down by violence, as it says in Revelation the 18th chapter. Thus with violence shall that great city go down. It says, why is earth in ashes proud? There is nothing, there is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. And like this guy, John Perkins explained, he said, any, any place they coveted, they went after. So this dude right here, he's a demon. Esau's a demon. You know, these goddamn Edomites are demons, man. And I want to look up this word covet real quick. I, I, I forgot to pull it up, but let's look up the word covet. This dude, this Edomite is the ultimate man that covet everything. To covet in the etymology, in the verb form, it says to desire or to wish for inordinate, inordinately or without regard for the rights of others. So it means to desire something that somebody else has. You know, very desirous. So you, you, he's been, he's so covetous. He's destroyed. Um, he's destroyed many because of what he wanted. Families, lands. You know, this guy, this Edomite got a lot of blood on his hands. This dude's a demon, man. You know, now, right before I was finna start, I was finna click it. The, the 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 brother Barack hit me up and he sent me this video. Let's play a little bit of this video right here. You know, I'm gonna squeeze this up in there. We economic hitmen are the first line of defense. We go in, we try to corrupt governments and, and get them to accept these huge loans, which we then use as leverage to basically own them. If we fail, as I failed in, in Panama with Omar Torrijos and in Ecuador with Jaime Roldos men who refuse to be corrupted. Then the second line of defense is we send in the jackals. And the jackals either overthrow governments or they assassinate. And once that happens and a new government comes in, boy, it's gonna toe the line because the new president knows what'll happen if he doesn't. In the case of Iraq, uh, both of those things failed. Economic hitmen were not able to get through to Saddam Hussein. We tried very hard. We tried to get him to accept a deal very similar to what the House of Saud had accepted in Saudi Arabia, but he wouldn't accept it. And so the jackals went in to take him out. They couldn't do it. His security was very good. Um, after all, he had one time worked for the CIA. He'd been hired to assassinate a former president of, of, of Iraq and failed, but he knew the system. So in 91, we send in the troops and we take out the Iraqi military. So we assume at that point that Saddam Hussein is gonna come around. We could have taken him out, of course, at that time. But we didn't want him. He's the kind of strong man we like. He controls his people. He could, we thought he could control the Kurds and keep the Iranians in their border and keep pumping oil for us. And then once we took out his military, now he's going to come around. So the economic hitmen go back in in the 90s without success. If they had had success, he'd still be running the country. We'd be selling him all the fighter jets he wants and everything else he wants. But they couldn't. They, they, they didn't have success. The jackals couldn't take him out again. So we sent the military in once again, and this time we did the complete job and took him out and in the process created for ourselves some very, very lucrative construction uh, deals. We had to reconstruct a country that we essentially destroyed, which is a pretty good deal if you own construction companies, big ones. So 
you know, Iraq shows the three stages. The economic hitmen fail there, the jackals fail there, and as a final measure, the military goes in. And in that way, we've really created an empire, but we've done it very, very subtly. It's clandestine. All the empires of the past were built on the military, and everybody knew they were building them. So the, the British knew they were building them, the French, the Germans, the, the Romans, the, the Greeks, and they were proud of it. And they always had some excuse like spreading civilization, spreading some religion, something like that. But they, they knew they were doing it. We don't. The majority of the people in the United States have no idea that we're living off the benefits of a clandestine empire. That today there's more slavery in the world than ever before. Wow. And that, you know what? That's funny. I didn't even know that. I, I'm watching this video. Um, you know, I, I, the brother sent it to me. And I was like, you know, I'm going to slap it up there and I'm going to watch it live. But this was the, the exact same video that I ran across two days ago that made me even go into this lesson. I ran across this video right here. And that's how I found John Perkins. The dude that was talking in this video, that's John, per that's John Perkins. You know? I looked this dude up and I found all what I have already. But hey, that's the spirit of the Lord working. But nonetheless, you heard him explain it. You heard it. You heard it out of the devil's mouth. Like the brother got right here, Shiloh. Psalm 64 and 8. It says, so they should make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. So this devil, this devil John Perkins explained what, why he even starts snitching about everything. Why is he even telling he said after 9/11, after they did that crap with 9/11, it made him. It just it was too much. It went, he, it went overboard for him, to the point where he just had to say something, and that's the reason why he's now. You see him in interviews and he's doing TED talks and everything of the sort, explaining it. And he already explained that they already threatened him. They already told him they was gonna kill him and do all of the different things, but the spirit of the Lord has on him. To, to, to speak about what the truth is on how these devils have used economic hitmen to gather the resources of the world. And like, <coughs> excuse me, like John Perkins just explained, there's more slavery in the world than there has ever been in the whole history right now under Esau Edom's hand. He got a lot of people in slavery. And that's why we're going to end it out right here on this Job 20. Because you did all what you did to us. You know, you fooled men. You did by violence. You took you took men heritages and, and used the force of the sword on them. But you but the Heavenly Father the whole time was watching everything you was doing. And he has everything tallied up about about what you've been you've been doing. And he has a severe judgment that no nation in the world will undergo except for the Edomites. The self-proclaimed white people today. You're going to go into slavery for all the wickedness you did. This is Job 20 and 18. It says, that which he labored for shall he restore. You're going to restore everything and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be. And he should not rejoice therein. So everything you stole is what you got to return. So at the end of all your thievery, um, you're going to have to return everything. That's why the Edomites, they're going straight to a pit. You ain't going to own nothing. You Edomites are going to not, you're not going to own nothing. You're not even going to have your own land. It says, because he have oppressed and have forsaken the poor, because he have vilely taken away a house which he buildeth not, as we heard John Perkins explain it. Surely he should not feel quietness in his belly. He should not save that which he have desired. You're not going to get... You're not going to continually rape and rob the people and you're not going to get to your new world order because you want to go even further with your raping and robbing um, by getting people to be in your new world order. But the Lord said, he shall not save that which he have desired. You're not going to have it. It says, there shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. You're losing everything. It says, in this... In the fullness of his sufficiency, he should be in straits. Every hand of the wicked should be upon him. So now you didn't already made your move by destroying the world and, and taking their resources in a lot of these different countries. But now you're moving into 
how you want to further your your diabolical plan with this new world order and having everybody in the world um see hipped up with that little grain of rice which is the MOTB but the lord said you ain't going you going to be in straights it ain't going to work out how he plans this new world order and what he's trying to do now it ain't going to work out how he think it should go the lord is going to throw a monkey wrench in there and it said every hand of the wicked should be upon him and the wicked is talking about the laborers, the ones you've been oppressing, the poor, from our people, even to these goddamn heathens that you got in sweatshops. You know? Everybody's figuring you out, man. It says, when he is about to fill his belly, the heavenly father shall cast his fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. The heavenly father is going to mess every all your plans up. It says he shall flee from the iron weapon and the boy still shall strike him through, which is that nuclear destruction that's going to destroy your whole empire that you've built. It says it was drawn and coming out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword coming out of the gall terrors are upon him, which is that nuclear missile. All darkness should be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown should consume him. It should go ill with him. That is left in his tabernacle. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity. So now we have the internet. The heavens is talking about the internet in this form. I mean, it's fashion. It should reveal his iniquity. Now we know about confessions of an economic hitman. Conf John John Perkins being a, a a veteran at what he do. So now your your iniquity your iniquity is being revealed. It says, and the earth shall rise up against him. Everybody is against you, devils. All the heathen is against you now. Everybody's fed up with you. You know? It says, the increase of his house shall depart, and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from the heavenly father, Yahweh by Hashem Shai, and the heritage appointed unto him by Yahweh. So this is, since you did all of this wickedness in the earth, since you made all these things happen, you know, the Heavenly Father got your ticket. You didn't get away. You had your little desire, your little fun. You know, you raped and robbed everybody. Yeah, you did it. You got everybody resources. Yeah, you did it. You did it by violence. Yeah, you did it. You got rich. People got poor. You had your little run for a long little time. But now you're at the end. You're at the end of your reign. And all your iniquity is coming out. Shame is on your glory now. We know what you're doing. And the world is... The, 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 I'm sorry. And the, the men of the Lord, we're praying against you. And the world is ready to fight, fight you, man. These nations are ready to fight you and take you down. And Yahweh Shemel Shai is orchestrating the whole plan. The whole movie of it. So you Edomites, you self proclaimed white man, you, your economic hitman and all this little strategy you created for yourself is revealed. We know what the deal is, and you going down. So through the spirit and power, Yahweh Shemel Shai, throw out for all you brethren uh, that stopped by and was able to check out this lesson. And hope that was edifying to you, brethren. And um, this has been um, economic hitmen. They cover fields and take them by violence. And we revealed this damn Edomite is on, he's been on some other stuff. So this is all more power to believe. This is the, this is the devil, and not to trust this guy. Hey, but with that being said, hey, um, do all for you, brother, and stop by. All praise to Yahweh Shimon Shai. Shalom, Shalom, Makim Step.